It might not be a surprise to anybody here that students from higher socioeconomic environments score higher on SAT scores than students from low socioeconomic environments. Take a look at the chart that's up here. You can see that students from higher socioeconomic environments certainly score higher according to the College Board than low socioeconomic students. In fact, the number one predictor of SAT scores is parent income. Now, I've been involved in public education for more than 34 years. And so I'm more than well aware of the impact of socioeconomic diversity on things like SAT scores. But it's only been the last 18 months that this has become very obvious to me. And the reason for that is I've moved from a rural district in California to right here in the center of the Silicon Valley to one of the best school districts in California, this one. And that experience has opened my eyes to the impact of socioeconomic diversity and the ultimate influence on things like SAT scores. I, um, I wanted, so I, uh, I wanted to offer some thoughts as I've examined this uh, phenomenon over the last year and a half that have come to my mind. And I've noticed that there are three themes that suggest to me that there's a socioeconomic advantage that we should all be aware of. The first theme I'd like to talk about is really obvious. The next two are not so obvious. The first one is students that have wealthier parents have parents that write checks to support their socioeconomics. We're all aware of this. Wealthier parents tend to spend more money on academic enrichment than parents that don't have the means. There's a way that we can sort of tease this out, I suggest to you, by asking students, what did they do over their summer vacation? So students, spend a minute and think about, what did you do over your summer vacation? Did you go to Europe? Perhaps you went to the Galapagos. Did you have a sports coach that helped you with your training? Did you have a music coach to help you with your music? Did you visit a college or colleges or museums? Did you travel to other places? Did you go to sports camp or coding camp or science camp? Or, <coughs> students, did you have to work extra hours while you were um, helping support the family uh, because your parents don't have enough money to put food on the table? Or perhaps you spent the summer babysitting for your siblings because there's no one else to babysit while your parents are at work. I suggest to you that the difference between the socioeconomic groups and how they spend their summers indicates how well prepared those students will be when they enter school and has a major impact on their success in school. So, parents writing checks, not a surprise. In fact, the research shows that enrichment expenditures on children are seven times higher for high socioeconomic parents than they are for low socioeconomic parents. The low socioeconomic parents, they don't have the means. And notice the trend lines. This gap appears to be getting bigger. And I suggest that that's a major influence on students' success during the school day and in school experiences. But there are two other socioeconomic advantages that I want to share with you today, themes that I've discovered over the last year and a half. Here's number two, parents and personal connections. Parents have an opportunity to help their students based on the people that they know. It's a little nebulous, but let me give you an example by talking about an experience in my life. It was about two years ago, and my son Dan, who's now in his 20s, had returned from a trip in South America. He was staying with us between his travels, and I invited some friends over to, uh, to have dinner with us. Uh, as we were planning the dinner, Dan said to us, he said, Dad, how would you guys like me to make a dish that I learned in Chile? It's called ceviche. 
and I would be happy to make it for you. He said, that's great. So Dan went out, he bought a fish, came back, he uh, cut up the fish, he put the citrus on the top, he made this beautiful dish, and he explained how he was making it. It was really quite a showman, my son is. And at the end of the meal, the friends that were there said to Dan, Dan, you are so into traveling, and you are so good at food and wine, hospitality. What if you sort of parlayed those two experiences together and made it a career option? He thought that was great. And, he, and the friend said, not only that, but we have good friends who own a cruise line. And they are always looking for people with your skill set. That was two years ago. There's a picture of Dan last week. He's uh, in Panama, and he's in charge of food and wine for a cruise ship in Panama. Now, not to take anything away from my son Dan. He got the job, he did a good job, he got promoted, everything's terrific. However, my son would have not gotten that job had it not been for friends of mine who happen to be good friends with people who own a cruise line. That's a socioeconomic advantage. I suggest to you that that happens every day when parents know people that help their children get internships, that help their children get first jobs. In fact, I have four sons, and three of them are involved professionally as a result of people that I knew. And that happens in this community all the time. It's a socioeconomic advantage. It's not a bad thing, it's a good thing. I said that there, was, there were three, and this is the third one. Exposure to the professional world. As we go through school, the purpose is to prepare our children to enter a professional world. How do they learn about it? Well, that's what this one is about. I suggest that you learn about what it's like to be a professional, students do, around the dinner table. They watch their parents, students do, they watch their parents debrief their workday. They meet their friends. They see what it's like to work in a professional environment so that they are prepared and confident to enter that environment when they get older. This number three came to light for me a year ago when I accompanied a group of students on a field trip. This was a field trip to Adobe, the high-tech company in San Jose, and I went on the field trip. A group of students from AVID class, they tend to be students from lower socioeconomics, first-generation, college-going students, they were, we were taking them to, uh, to Adobe. The folks at Adobe had identified five employees that had also come from avid type environments, low socioeconomic, some of them had lived in the inner city. And these five employees had somehow managed to earn themselves great jobs at Adobe. <coughs> they had overcome obstacles and they were very proud of their upward trajectory. So we brought our students there, they met in small groups. They processed, told the story of how those employees got there. It was a great day. Afterwards, I debriefed with the students, the AVID students. And one student said something to me that I thought was highly um, significant. She said, Dr. Harding, I listened to all five of those employees. And they all loved their jobs. She said, I've never met an adult that's loved their job before. And I thought, what a significant statement to get to be a high school student and not know that a professional work environment is inherently satisfying. How would they have known? My kids know that because I'd come home every day and I'd tell them around the dinner table and they'd see our friends and that was the experience. So I suggest that that socioeconomic environment advantage is highly significant in the motivation of students from low socioeconomic environments compared to high as they go through school. So these are just three suggestions. There might be others. I don't have a scientific study on this. This is the world according to me. But I think that those socioeconomic advantages help students be bold, 
helps them be confident, helps them take initiative, and helps them be prepared for a professional world. That if they don't have that, they don't have those qualities. I think it's important. Now, some people would say, that's just the luck of the draw. Some people are born rich. Some people are born poor. It's just the way it is. I disagree. I would argue that we have a societal moral uh, imperative, a moral commitment to those students, regardless of the means of their parents, to provide the basic uh, experiences so every student can be successful in a professional world when they leave school. That's what I believe. So what do we do? How do we address these issues? Well, I think there's a wide variety of things that we can do, but we have to start with one premise. There is a socioeconomic advantage, and we need to know what it is. What do wealthier parents give to their students outside the school day that helps those students with their confidence and with their skill set? Schools do a great job from 8 o'clock to 3 o'clock, 180 days a year. But most of that economic advantage comes outside the 8 o'clock to 3 o'clock school, school day. So what can, what can we do? Now, one thing we can do is we can open our doors at schools beyond the school day so all our students can have a quiet and engaging place to work after hours. Another thing that we can do is we can offer AVID classes, like AVID light classes, where students are exposed to universities, they are taken out and meet professionals, so we can address these socioeconomic advantage issues. We can offer summer programs that are highly enriching, like the wealthy students get, but we can offer it for all students, not just remediation, but more than that over the summer. We can offer tutoring programs and mentoring programs and scholarship programs that bring professionals into the school environment, that help build relationships between our low socioeconomic students and professionals out there in the community, that are specifically designed for those students. Our country is based on a premise that upward mobility should be available to everyone. That anyone who works hard should be able to get wherever they want to go. And I suggest to you that that notion is in jeopardy. And that educational equity is the key. Thank you. <laughs>